Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform and interpret a John Keir trend test. Uh, I believe that's how it's pronounced. It's a relatively, it's quite an obscure test, the uh, John Keir trend test. It's also known as the uh, John Keir Terbstra test, I believe is, is how SPSS calls it. Uh, but most people uh, that use the term, I'd say 90% of the time that you see it uh, in, in books or, or papers or on the internet, it's, it's the John Keir trend test rather than the John Keir Terpstra test. Um, so the John Keir trend test is a, um, a test that is a non-parametric uh, equivalent of analysis of variance, much like Kruskal Wallace is, but it's actually different than Kruskal Wallace in that uh, it's testing a trend, a linear trend in the pattern of the observations across groups. So the Kruskal Wallace uh, is only testing for the difference between at least one uh, paired comparison, if you will. Uh, but the John Keir trend test is, is looking for a linear trend across groups in the dependent variable. Now in this fic fictitious example, what I've got is a dependent variable called quiz marks. Uh, and this is the number of marks that students get on a quiz at the end of a tutorial. And it's a, it's a statistics tutorial. And I've got four groups, and uh, each group has uh, six students in it. And the groups are different uh, in the sense that the uh, group number one has uh, very little uh, reference to formulas, and the second group has some reference to formulas, uh, the third group has more reference to formulas, and the fourth group has the most references to formulas in the tutorial. And so at the end of the tutorial, a, uh, the same quiz is given to all the students to help uh, measure the amount of learning that took place. And the hypothesis is that the number, the amount of exposure to formulas is going to reduce the amount of marks that students get uh, based on some simple hypothesis that students uh, don't like to see formulas, they get nervous when they see them, uh, and so it's, it's affecting negatively their ability to attend to the testable material in the quiz. So we could test this uh, with a, a one-way ANOVA, but uh, I'm going to assume that I'm worried that my data are non, uh, normally distributed, which is where non-parametric tests uh, are most applicable. Now the John Keir, te John Keir trend test, just like the Kruskal Wallace, assumes homogeneity of variance. And I've mentioned in previous videos that a lot of people think that Kruskal Wallace and Man Whitney U do not assume homogeneity of variance. They do. Uh, and the John Keir trend test is no different. It, it also assumes homogeneity of variance. I'm not going to test it in this video because I've tested, uh, I've used Levine's test of homogeneity of variance several times now. So if you want to check out how to do that, you should check out the Levine's test or the Kruskal Wallace test or the Man with New test where I do that. And I also show a non-parametric equivalent of Levine's test, Levine's homogeneity of variance test. These data may or may not be non-normally distributed. I don't know. Uh, I suspect the, the sample size isn't very big, so it'd be, it would be tough to find out any difference. But let's just say we were worried about non-normally distributed data. But we were satisfied that the variances were homogenous. Now, to, te to do a John Keir trend test, it's pretty easy. You just go into Analyze and go into Non-Parametric Tests and Legacy Dialogues and K-Independent Samples. And you put the quiz marks into your test variable list and your grouping variable into group just like you would for a Kruskal Wallace and then you have to define your range. And I've got the lowest range is 1, the group that had very little exposure to formulas, and the fourth group that had a maximum amount of exposure to the formulas. Now I'm going to mention before I carry on that there's something really cool about the John Keir trend test in that it's identical to another test uh, in terms of effect size, and uh, I'll show that in a, in a few minutes.
So here's the John Keir Terpstra option here in SPSS, so you need to unselect Kruskal Wallace. Uh, I wouldn't choose any of the options. I don't find the descriptive statistics uh, relevant in SPSS.